Now, this is my proposed design, but what do we do when we get into hydraulics, when we deal with trying to deliver a final surface to somebody that's going to run a hydraulic analysis? Well, this is where we also come into the idea and the concepts of phasing. So I'm going to do these rather quickly, and I apologize because we are running close on the clock. But I want to make sure you get these couple of techniques out of the way. And the next one I'm going to take a look at is maybe some phasing. Maybe, you know, it was great that I grabbed London Road. Um, but on this particular case, uh, Scott's got on the project the need to be able to deliver, you know, these final surfaces in various uh, iterations. Maybe we're doing London Road and, and this Church Road as well. And so I've also brought in my civil cell. You know, I've got a lot of complexity going on here. Well, same thing is true. When we work with our proposed boundaries, I've already done these two. I just want to share with you. I've run a graphic filter. I ran a graphic filter, same as I did with the main corridor. And I'll go ahead and delete this just to do it again. And so I've referenced the necessary elements to my file. And I can come over to the graphic filter tool. And that same filter I just used a moment ago, it's really about the models that I've incorporated or referenced to the given file. So I've created a file here for today called Terrain Proposed Phase 1. And I've referenced all of those road elements and civil cells that I felt were meaningful for that portion of the construction. And I actually want to go ahead and do a proposed finish grade and preview and we can see all of those necessary elements being captured. If I need, once again, to define a maximum triangle length or something like that, maybe I'll do a 125. And then perhaps I want to tell users that this is the you know, uh, design terrain, and this is just phase one. I can do that. So as we're delivering surfaces, um, they can get them in those various configurations. And so now I just simply accept and I've created that. Of course, I've already done the next one as well. So let's go take a look at phase two and not to repeat the process a third time, but I think you can imagine uh, the process. We're just referencing more content and grabbing more complicated configurations. So here on this, I've got a whole bunch of quarter models all converging and coming together. And maybe this is our second phase. And so you can see I was able to use the graphic filter again. So by separating your files out for purpose, assembling those documents that you need, um, you can certainly capture some, some uh, surfaces uh, in various configurations, as you can see here. Now let's take a look back at that final hydraulic surface, because after it was all said and done, maybe phase two is the surface I need on this project, and the drainage team needs this plus the existing ground. And so in this instance, I can come over and I'm going to do a terrain final surface for today. And on my terrain final surface, if we go ahead and take a look here, what we're going to see is I'm creating multiple files with multiple rules and relationships, but all the while, you know, managing and orchestrating these rules and relationships for a given purpose. So each one of these is satisfying a different person or a different part of the project's uh, timeline chronologically. And so I've got a final surface. I'm going to go ahead and delete what I've got there thus far. Get that out of there. Fit my view. And so what I want to do is take a look and hear that phase two proposed. Well, it's gone because I actually deleted it earlier anyhow. And so what I want to do is take advantage of wherever that existing terrain is. I can go ahead and see that's the existing terrain. That's what we were given for the project. Ariel flew that. But now it's our turn to add in that final surface so we can give it to the drainage group. And in this particular case, I'm simply going to come down. And you know what? It was that last phase of my design I need. And I'm going to go ahead and add that in, integrate that into my file. And there we have the limits of my proposed as well as the limits of my existing here. And for everyone's awareness, I think many of us know we can alter the look and feel of terrains using the properties themselves and doing terrain overrides. So if I want to override the symbology, we can do that. And I've done that here today. But uh, I want you to see that I've got 
also this proposed added in, and we can see just the boundary there. So that one's right now just the proposed boundary. But what I'm going to do now is finish this up with one of the commands we used in the very beginning for survey to create that null surface trick for a, a final existing ground. And I'm actually going to come through and complex this terrain. And I'm going to grab both the existing and then I'm going to add this particular one called phase two and merge it in, which is going to immediately cut out the triangulation within those limits. And how do I know it's going to cut it out? Well, the proof here uh, for everyone is my contours will not be consistent unless I do so. So what we're expecting to see here is contour interval that's going to actually just cleanly drape across both of them. So once I go and add this one in as a merged terrain, allowing it to clip out that existing triangulation, and I'm going to set this to my proposed contours. And why don't I call this final surface? When I choose finish, we can see now the contour intervals are coming through. And as the proposed is integrating in with the existing, it is now traversing right into it and continuing as one whole surface. So this surface now is my final surface that I can also then, of course, hand off to the, the drainage group. And if in this particular circumstance, they need it in a different format. Remember, we can export that out to things like Land XML uh, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I bet you're wondering with all of these different references, well, how am I going to manage all that? That's a lot of files you've done today, Don. Well, I'm going to finish off with one last tip or technique, and uh, it's about the reprocess. If we understand the reprocessing, we also understand we can take advantage of some tools that have been around in our product for more than 20 years. Um, and in this particular instance, if you've heard this message before from me, it's about the batch process. And so in this instance, because I understand that the surfaces change and they propagate forward, there's a chronology to this that I need to make sure I'm opening things in a certain order. Well, on this particular uh, batch process, it may be something as simple as Let's just talk about London Road. We knew we had an existing surface. We knew we did a clipped surface for Scott. And then we knew that I created a proposed surface. Now, that later fed into some other ones. But for today, we're just going to keep it simple and go with those three. And so I'm actually going to add those documents in that order. So I'm going to navigate. And let me come over here to my Bentley folder. And I'm going to navigate to my understanding terrains where I had the terrain existing. Perhaps survey is still making updates to this. Well, I want to make sure I add that one in, right? I want that to open first. Then next, well, you know what? I want to go ahead and grab that clipped surface, but I also want to get this proposed one. So when I add these both in, um, you can see that I added them in as follows. And I have the ability to open any and all models. Um, and I can also run various commands, but for this purpose of propagating the changes through multiple files, I don't need to run any other fancy commands. I simply have to open them in the given order so that if this changes, it talks to this one. This one then changes. It talks to Scott's quarter model, which ultimately, um, in the end, um, then it might impact the way the proposed one works. And subsequently, if this was only London Road and the existing terrain to make a final surface, I might have a fourth one being the final surface. But at this point, I can go ahead and simply save as. And so I'm going to save this out. And in my particular example, I'm going to save this to today's exercise called Understanding Terrains. And I've got this London Road, uh, you know, maybe final surface or London Road terrains. You know, the name is really up to you. Uh, use something that's going to be meaningful that your design teams will, can imagine. Maybe you have different, different outcomes for different roads and different orders. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And I have that saved now. And simply in order to make sure that everything is evergreen, I'm simply going to run. Now, this is going to work with ProjectWise as well. Um, but it quickly opens all the files and ensures that as it's opening the file, those things update. So we're going to see as this jumps through.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.